Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and it was just revealed that episode 4 of Arrow this season is going to be titled The Magician. They tweeted the title page right before they started filming. Mark Guggenheim included John Barrowman's name in the tweet, so the title The Magician probably refers to Merlin the Magician, but it could also be an easter egg for Zatanna, as well as other magical things inside the Arrowverse. You also have to remember that Guillermo del Toro has also been talking a lot about Justice League Dark recently too, so it gets you thinking. This video is mostly going to be an explanation for Merlin the Magician, as in Malcolm Merlin, just because that's what episode 4 is really going to be about. Magician is just one of his nicknames from the comics, but I'm also going to do some backstory for Zatanna, as well as Dr. Fate, Constantine, and Justice League Dark, and how the show might treat them if they do a crossover. And if you're finding me for the first time, I do Arrow videos every week, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. So, magic on Arrow. Not gonna happen just yet. It took Smallville till season 8 to get there, so the magician title of episode 4 refers to Malcolm Merlin. His original name in the comics before he joined the League of Assassins was Arthur King. Eventually he took the stage name Merlin the Magician. In Oliver Queen's first few years as Green Arrow in Star City, Arthur challenged him to a public archery contest. Arthur, or Malcolm Merlin as he was calling himself, totally got his ass handed to him and just disappeared in disgrace. Eventually, he was recruited into the League of Assassins, and during his time there, he went on to tutor the Cassandra Cain Batgirl. This was all before the New 52 reboot. After the reboot, his real name was retconned to be Tommy Merlin, and of course, Arrow the show went on to change things just a little bit more, so that the character that John Barrowman plays on the show is an amalgamation of the old version of the character and the new version. So what does picking a title like The Magician say about the story? Mostly, I think it's going to be John Barrowman's grand reintroduction to Starlink City. They'll have to explain what he was doing while he was away the first time during Season 2, and then what he's been doing since he came back for Thea. There is no guarantee that Thea is going to be part of the episode, but since Will Holland is still a cast regular, I'm guessing she's going to be around. Mostly, though, it's just going to be about Merlin. Merlin is Oliver's ultimate villain. It's like the relationship between Grant Gustin's Flash and Professor Zoom. Merlin's a little bit more of an ambiguous villain than Professor Zoom, but what if they gave him his own island arc in Season 3? Not send Merlin to the island or anything like that. I mean, give him a flashback story that would be told over one or more episodes. So season to season, Oliver's flashbacks serve a really important purpose. Yes, they're totally awesome to watch, but they inform the plot in present day. Usually the flashbacks tease things that are central to each episode. Because Episode 4 is titled The Magician, they could use a flashback to tee up Merlin's grand plan for Season 3. Remember, way back in the comics, Oliver totally shamed him during an archery contest, so the show could twist things just a little bit and make Merlin shame Oliver in some public way. Since it's pretty early in the season and John Barrowman is a cast regular, whatever his story is going to be, it's going to take all season to tell, so they'll probably just be setting things up. And something else to get really excited about, usually when the show picks a title that's right out of the comic books, they end up doing something that's part of a really big comic book story, even if they change things a little. Regardless of whatever references they end up doing, it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be all about Merlin and his new plan. There's also this meta thing going on where John Barrowman's personality in real life makes me think that Malcolm Merlin in the episode is going to be really theatrical. Like he's going to be a stage performer, just dancing for the crowd. For anyone who has not seen John Barrowman at a convention in real life, he is totally over the top in the best possible way. He is a consummate performer. If you remember him from Doctor Who or Torchwood, whenever he got to do a little more singing and dancing, that's what I'm thinking of. Stephen Amell already said that he flat out refused to do a musical episode of Arrow. He was mostly joking, but at the same time, Malcolm Merlin, I think, is going to be very flamboyant, without being funny. Picture him giving off more of a Tom Hiddleston, Loki vibe. You know, just having fun being in the spotlight again. In the sense of the story, Malcolm being back in the public eye inside Starlink City. As for what I think he was doing during the break, I mostly think he was training Thea and laying the groundwork for whatever his takeover plan is. Something that would restore a lot of his lost power. Remember, he lost his company just like Oliver lost his, so Merlin and Oliver still share a lot in common. Thea's storyline is a little bit easier to predict, but I have no idea what Merlin's grand plan is going to be. I just think that he's going to be taking advantage of Oliver being very distracted. Willa Holland actually posted this picture to Instagram recently. It's just her working out with a hardcore trainer. In terms of persona or comic book characters, I think that she's going to be closer to Artemis. They'll just change Artemis' backstory the way they changed Isabel Rochev to make her Ravager. And if you needed more evidence, don't forget that Thea also had archery trophies inside her bedroom. Her motivation in Season 3 is just a little unclear right now, but I am so looking forward to her getting a big fight scene with Roy. It's just going to be so much fun. Just to clarify my earlier Merlin point, when I was talking about Oliver being distracted, I was mostly referring to the new villains, Count Vertigo and Ra's al Ghul, occupying the biggest part of his headspace, and his other remaining brain cells being spent thinking about Felicity, Ray Palmer, and everyone else. So it just seems like Merlin would use that situation to take advantage of Oliver. 
So now time to talk about Zatanna, Dr. Fate, Constantine, Justice League Dark inside the Arrowverse. Magic right now totally does not exist inside the Arrowverse, but the producers of all the different DC TV shows are open to the idea of crossovers. So until there's a strong plan in place for Arrow and Constantine to start referencing each other, Zatanna has a better chance of showing up inside a Constantine episode just because they're already dealing with that type of subject matter. Because of the way they tease Dr. Fate in the Constantine premiere, I think that Constantine is going to wait till season two before it does any big, big comic book characters. They'll probably follow the Arrow model, stick to core characters in the first season, and if it gets renewed, which I think it will, use season two to bring in more comic book characters, like Zatanna would be a really easy sell. Constantine is already rooted in the idea of magic and supernatural powers. So escalating things just a little bit, let's move on to Guillermo del Toro and Justice League Dark. He has a finished script, it's been in development for a long time. He said he totally wants to make Constantine part of the team, as in TV Constantine. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but think about it this way. The TV shows and the movies are not going to have any kind of crossover, so consider them separate universes. I think the chances are pretty good we could see a TV version of Justice League Dark way before they ever tried it as a movie. Plus, via Arrow and the Flash, they can also do a modified Justice Society. Doing Justice Society just makes it easier for them to use characters that don't step on the toes of the movie characters. They're just getting started with The Flash though, so I don't expect anything like that for at least another season or two, but if they did it on Smallville, they can totally do it again. But let me know, would you rather see Justice League Dark done on TV via like the Constantine Arrow universe, and do you think that Arrow and The Flash are going to get to Justice Society before Zack Snyder and the movie people get to Justice League? I say yes to both. Justice League Dark on TV is a no-brainer. Kimmel del Toro always seems like the busiest man on the planet, and he's developing Pacific Rim too, so he might not be able to participate if it happens, which is a bummer, but the Justice League movie is not planned until 2017. That's almost season 6 of Arrow, so I definitely think that The Flash and Arrow can get to their team up way before then. Right now I'm planning videos for my favorite Justice League Dark and favorite Justice Society stories, so be sure to subscribe to get those. There has been some movie news, and I'll explain in just a second. Right now, the biggest rumor is, is that Lex Luthor is going to be cloning a Kryptonian at the end of Batman vs. Superman, and he's going to synthesize Kryptonite. It's just a rumor, but I will do a video if it turns into something bigger. Just because of Guardians of the Galaxy being so popular right now, I think there's been a whole lot of like superhero team-up talk. In the meantime, though, learn all about Marvel's Inhumans movie by clicking here, and you can click here to learn all about Wildcat, the Ted Grant Wildcat coming on Arrow Season 3. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.